Hey, good afternoon, Carolina Weather Authority. This is meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg. I'm going to give you guys the latest here on the tropics and our update to our seasonal forecast here at Carolina Weather Authority. Let me get myself out of the way for you guys here. And uh, real quick, if you haven't already, if you've been enjoying our videos as we took you through Hurricane Isaias last week, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as we continue to grow our reach and plan on doing more lives for you guys. We would love to get to a thousand subscribers and that way we can give you guys a live update straight from YouTube, not going through third party software. So that would be awesome for us. Anyway, um, we put out an article yesterday talking about our updates to our tropical season. This is on CarolinaWXAuthority.com, and you'll notice that we do not feel like we're even to the close to the peak of the uh, hurricane season, and what we're expecting here in the Carolinas and in the other parts of the southeast is the additional threat for more hurricanes, some of which could be major. So um, ESIES was definitely damaging for some, but was not the end of the road for us here, unfortunately, for tropical season. Uh, we believe that there's a lot of ingredients in place. And so we've uh, upped our forecast at this point from 15 to 20 to 18 to 23 named storms this season, uh, which could put us second on record behind 2005. And I've seen some forecasts that have had even more out there. We're not quite ready to pull the trigger on that just yet. Um, and I'll go into reasons why that is. Uh, but we're expecting about half of these storms to reach hurricane status. And of those, half of them will become major hurricanes. If we do have seven or eight major hurricanes, nobody here at CWA will be surprised. That would put us pretty much in rare air, uh, but definitely something that we have to be on the lookout for in the Carolinas. And I'm going to get to why we're expecting that in a little bit here. Currently, the five-day forecast from the Hurricane Center, we do have a wave now approaching 30 west, which does have a 50% chance of developing into a depression or storm here um, towards the middle of next week, we think. Um, it doesn't look like at this point something we need to really be too concerned with here in the Carolinas, and I'm going to get to why. And this could be something that could be a short-lived storm, kind of like Gonzalo, uh, but something we may have to keep an eye on maybe in about 10, 14 days out in here in the Western Caribbean. Uh, but right now, this is not something that I think will be a threat to the Carolinas. Behind it, though, I think we have more that we need to be aware of, at least. Uh, the tropics are pretty quiet outside of this wave right here, um, showing some um, signs of a little bit of organization, but it's going to take some time. Uh, we've got another wave we're going to have to keep an eye on coming off of Africa. And really, it's the one behind it that may be more of a concern for us at this point. And I know this looks a little bit funny to you guys. Um, but this is the one that um, the Hurricane Center has a medium shot at developing. This one after it has not um, shown signs of organization as it hasn't moved offshore just yet, but could. The one behind it, though, is a lot bigger, and the timing of it is going to be in a more favorable spot for development. Um, also, um, we do have on our models page, if you want to see the latest, um, go to CWA Home and then click on Models. We can show you all of these on here as well. You can take a look at... Um, more of the longer range forecasts, more of the rainfall forecast for us, temperature forecasts. Um, we also have what's called the MJO forecast, which I'm going to get to in a minute, but that talks about phases of favorable development in the tropics, uh, jet stream and winds, and any severe weather as well. So I do encourage you guys to go visit that. Um, now we're going to look at the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, and you can see a little bit of uptick over here in the central Atlantic, but really still quite a bit of dry air to contend with. So anything that does make it over here is going to struggle to pull some moisture in. But the, the thing that we've seen in the tropics is once one of them brings some moisture in, then the ones behind it can certainly feed off of that moisture. So it may not be this first system uh, over in here, um, or even the second one, but the one behind it could... Uh, be the one that sucks up all the moisture, kind of like we saw with Isa Eos. Um, some experimental probabilities at this point, you know, um, the Canadian and GFS are showing some possible tropical development in a few days once we get to about 40 west, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. The one behind it, uh, the GFS shows a slight chance of development, but these two we don't believe at this point are going to be a threat. Uh, perhaps that third one behind it has a better shot. Um, here's a look at what we call the MJO, which is the Madden-Julian Oscillation Forecast. And basically what happens is that we see pulses of activity in the tropics that kind of uh, go across the globe in, you know, several day stages, three to seven day stages. Right now, the Atlantic Ocean is in an unfavorable spot. When we see the reds and the brighter colors, that shows us unfavorable potential for tropical development. Um, the more favorable areas right now are in the Western Pacific and Indian Ocean. But if you track that next week into the Pacific um, and eventually into the Caribbean, there's some more favorable weather, we think, to see 
um, the rising air that promotes thunderstorms that can lead to tropical systems. But then we wait two weeks and we do start to see things ramping up around the 20th of August. And this will continue to spread eastward. And we think the very end of August into the beginning of September uh, lends to be a very busy time in the tropics and something that we're definitely concerned about in the Carolinas and across the Gulf states and Caribbean um, as what we think could be several uh, hurricanes on the list, unfortunately. Um, another thing that promotes uh, that tropical um, development is warm water. And right now, a good chunk of the tropical Atlantic remains above average. In fact, um, pretty much everywhere except for south of the African Cape Verde zone is above average, and in some cases, well above average off the mid-Atlantic and northeast coast. Uh, so that's definitely something that also favors this uh, burst of tropical activity heading our way. Um, again, this is a, a look that I should have shown a little bit while ago with the MJO. Um, sinking air is what we've actually dealt with a lot of the last couple of weeks. We did have a couple of storms buck that trend, but once we see rising air in the greens, this is the 17th of August and the 22nd of August, we definitely have a, a better shot at seeing a promotion of a lot of storms at this point. In fact, this is pretty much off the charts. Um, so the very end of August into the beginning of September, which coincides with our peak of our season, we could see several storms which could reach major hurricane intensity. Again, looking at this alone is not going to get us there, but it's definitely an ingredient that favors um, a lot of rising motion. Uh, another thing we look at is uh, how deep are our warm waters? Are they just shallow or are they deep? And from the uh, University of Miami, we can see in the Northwest Caribbean, um, 80 degree Fahrenheit temperatures go well down to over 150 meters. So there is a ton of um, ocean heat potential in this region. And if you go up the East Coast through the Bahamas and off the Carolina coast and even across the Central and Southern Gulf, we see that as well. Um, a little bit less once we get east of 45 west. So what will happen is these waves in here may not have a lot of fuel to develop, but once they move um, farther to the west and when we get close to the islands and in this region in here, um, this is our area that things can go bonkers in. Um, we'll look at the uh, rainfall forecast over the next three months, and we see that um, the climate forecast system does favor a lot of activity, a lot of tropical moisture in the Northwest Caribbean where it's seeing that warm water. Same goes for the Southwestern Gulf and maybe the Central Gulf of Mexico where it usually is wet this time of the year. And then uh, a lot of favorable activity here in the Southwest Atlantic as well. Uh, in the Carolinas, we're kind of neutral, but I think it'll end, end up being a little on the wet side, at least for the next month or two. And then maybe in the fall, with La Nina strengthening, we could have a drier pattern. This is a look at the ensemble prediction, uh, and it shows where the areas in red are what we're looking for, where potential low pressure systems could be. A uh, blue is where the high pressure systems are. And when we see a large area of high pressure like this, that definitely favors activity to come down through the Caribbean. Now, if these pressures drop and we start to see uh, colors that become more neutral, then we be, get more concerned with activity coming up in this direction here. So I'm going to kind of scan this over for you guys. This is this Sunday today, and we can already see that pressures begin to drop a little bit towards the middle of next week. And here are some areas that we're watching. One on a near Wednesday morning, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning near the islands. Uh, two out here, and this is the area we're watching behind it. But do watch as this region of high pressure is still strong, but starts to shift eastward a little bit. And now we see uh, more of a favorable pattern by next weekend of lower pressures in the Western Caribbean and across the Central Atlantic. As we speed that up another few days into the beginning of the following week, um, the models are definitely hitting at a lot of potential tropical trouble spots. One over the Western Caribbean, one in the Central Atlantic here, and now we're watching the Cape Verdes for the 17th. And you can see right here, our colors have gotten a lot brighter by the 20th of August. And what this is, is the models seeing that um, open water is becoming more favorable for rising air and warm waters. Um, we do see a little bit of high pressure off the Carolinas, so I think we're okay through the 21st. Uh, but then after that, um, a lot of model solutions show low pressure here over the Southwest Atlantic by the 24th. And again, I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but at least um, there's some more potential than we've seen. Same goes for the Northwest Caribbean and Western Gulf. Same goes for the Central Atlantic in here. And uh, we take this another day and we start to see more favorable position for development to come up in this direction um, towards the 25th of August and more storms behind it. We're not saying there's going to be a storm hitting the Carolinas on the 24th, 25th, but watching all this activity out in here and also over in here makes us think there could be a hurricane in the Gulf before the end of the month and there may be a hurricane over the southeastern United States right off the coast here 
either at the end of this month or the beginning of September. So we've got a lot to watch there. Um, and again, another thing we're looking at is wind shear to see if these storms can develop very quickly into major hurricanes. And right now, the areas of red uh, show us unfavorable wind shear. But as we go to next week, we start to see that diminish as we get into a more favorable pattern. And then in here, wind shear is near or even below average by the end of the month and into the start of September. So more favorable conditions for storms to not only form, but then to rapidly intensify as we have lower than average wind shear. So the trend is definitely uh, one that, that keeps us uh, looking at uh, the potential for several storms to develop. Um, again, our sea surface temperatures are well above average over the open waters, pretty much everywhere here except where ESA ES departed. And again, um, this is likely to change. As it cooled off in the wake of our storm, it should heat back up, but we've also seen warming in the Gulf, warming in the Southwest Atlantic. And um, this is why we're continuing to think this region in here is our top spot at seeing hurricanes, but also potentially up in here and across the central Gulf Coast of Mexico. Gulf of Mexico, Gulf Coast. Um, anyway, yeah, got that a little confusing there. The La Nina uh, numbers have also dropped, which uh, again favors more tropical development. So we've got a lot of ingredients for a very busy season. And uh, we're going to keep you guys posted here on uh, Carolina Weather Authority. And as you can see, this is not really hype. This is a forecast based on all the ingredients I just showed you. Um, so again, be prepared for more tropical activity here at the end of the month and right on through September and possibly into early October as well. All right, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you already haven't. And appreciate you guys joining us on this weekend. Be safe.